Good morning. Let's open June 25th, 2021 with prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready? Let's do this. Yes, Lord, we thank you for this day uh, as we continue with Book of Acts, Chapter 22, Lord. Wow. Apostle Paul's testimony. We'd like to hear it. We'd like to learn from it. And we'd like to live also a similar life like he did. Help us, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. June 25th, uh, this, we Koreans celebrate uh, Korean War, Yu-Gi-Oh, 625. But anyways, uh, on this day, we're going to talk about how um, we must live based on Apostle Paul's testimony. A little the review of what has happened so far. Paul and his team arrives at Jerusalem against all the advice of uh, his team. Basically, Paul says, nope, I need to do this. It's God's will. So Paul had been worshiping in the temple when he's falsely accused of bringing Gentile inside the temple, which is not true. But it didn't matter. They just want to kill him. So they start a riot. And they are now in the process of killing him. Uh, centurions, uh, the, the army of about a thousand, uh, broke up the riot and bound Paul in chains. And then Paul asked Captain for opportunity to speak up in Greek. He said, you speak Greek? How? Well, I'm educated. <laughs> then he gives this testimony. What is a theological uh, argument or theological debate or theological issues? Uh, he responds to that, not in theology, but in testimony. And that's the key thing today. The greatest defense of any theological debate is, hey, I have a testimony about that. I lived through that. This is my life experience. So we must all have testimonies about issues in life. That is not some theoretical stuff, but it's something that you live through. Amen. And his testimony has three parts, BC, AC, and AD. I'm going to talk, talk to you about what that means. Um, personal testimony is powerful because... Um, it, it's not about right and wrong, per se. I mean, if you think about advertisement that you see uh, from toothpaste to a car, <laughs> it's all about personal testimony. Like, I love it because it works, right? I love this car because I had no problem. I mean, the whole advertisement is based on not scientists come out and talk about statistics and numbers and, you know, even toothpaste like, well, you know, according to survey, 75% likes this and, you know, it works and, you know, at a research base. No, it's about a person saying that I love this taste and it works for me. So that's it. We, you know, uh, kind of testimony that we bring out uh, to the world. And I told you already, Americans do not read Bible, they read Christians. And so if you want to evangelize, well, you, your life better have a testimony. And whatever they see in your life better testify that Jesus is real, that Jesus is God, right? According to Barna Research Group, the attendance level higher than the, for example, 48% of those in South and 47 those in Midwest attend church in a typical week compared to 41% of West, 35% of Northeast. That was a survey of 2004, so it's a bit outdated, but I think the trend is safe, right? The mid Midwest, uh, the South and the Midwest uh, attend more church than West Coast, California, right? They're called liberal state. But 
60% of born-again Christian attend church last week compared to 43% of all adults. So let's say the Americans, uh, the, the Barna Report survey, are you born-again Christian? Yes, I am. Did you go to church? Yes, I did. 60%. Are you American? Yes. What percentage did you go to church? 43%. So 43% of Americans said that they went to church, but 60% of so-called born-again Christian went to church. What's shocking actually is that only 60% of self-claimed born-again um, went to church. And what's more shocking is that so-called born-again Christian, they said, do you believe Jesus is the only way? Jesus Christ died and resurrected. And they said only 12% believe that that is the case. So their definition of born again, being Christian is all out of whack. And kind of explains uh, why we think the uh, so-called Christians in America is represented, how they act uh, so much so that young Americans now are not attending church because they got disappointed. They got turned off by so-called Christians in America. Now, so 2004 statistic, same, right? So my point is, it's not theological correctness that we're going to bring people into church, but it's how we live. Do you have a testimony? So this is how Apostle Paul starts his testimony. BC, before Christ. Brethren and fathers, bear my defense before you now. Acts 22, verse 1. And when they heard that he spoke to them in Hebrew language, they kept all the more silent. Then he said, I am indeed a Jew born in Tarsus of Sicilia, Cilicia, but brought up in the city, the feet of Gamaliel, taught according to the strictness of father's law, and was zealous toward God as you all are today. I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also the high priest bear me witness and all the council of the elders from whom I also received letters to the brethren and went to Damascus to bring in chains even those who are there in Jerusalem to be punished ah, before Christ. There's three aspects, B.C., A.C., and A.D. So in your testimony, you should be able to say, before I knew Christ, this is who I was. And that's what he's talking about. Man, I'm a Jew. I was taught under Gamaliel, the, the, like the scholars of the day. I was a strict order of Pharisees. Matter of fact, I persecuted church, the church, the way to death, where I was killing Christians. Even the high priest gave me permission, right? And I was on the way to Damascus. Then this famous story of how he accepts Christ. Verse 6, AC, accepting Christ. That's what AC stands for. BC, before Christ, AC, accepting Christ. Now it happened as I journey and came near Damascus at about noon. Suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me, and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth whom you are persecuting and those who are with him and those who are with, with me in this of the light and were afraid, but they did not hear the voice of him who spoke to me. So I and I and were of, so I and were afraid, but they did not hear the voice of God who spoke to me. So I said, what shall I do, Lord? And Lord said to me, arise and go to the Damascus and there you'll be told all things which are appointed for you to do. Wow. Whew, powerful testimony. Before Christ, I was a persecutor of Christ. At the time of accepting Christ, I heard the voice of God. And I, he asked two fundamental questions. I preach on this many times. Only two questions in life that it's as a good question because answer to wrong question is irrelevant. 
you must ask the right question. Right question is, who are you, Lord? Who is God? Right? And God says, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Then he says, what should I do then? Well, I'll tell you what to do. I'll, there is appointment. There is will. There's something that I will for you, that I delight in for you to delight in. Right? And then he says, A.D., after decision. After he said, okay, what did he do? Verse 11. And since I could not see for the glory of that day of, of the light being led by the hand of those who were with me, I came into Damascus. Then a certain Anani, Anani, Ananias, a certain Ananias of devout man, according to the law, having a good testimony, with all the Jews who dwelt there, came to me, and he stood and said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that time, hour I looked up at him, then he said, The God of our fathers have chosen you, that you should know his will. Wow, isn't it great? Knowing the will of God, you should know his will. And see that just one, and hear the voice of his mouth, for you will be his witnesses, Martus, you'll die for that witness. O man of what you who have seen and heard, and now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Wow. So before Christ, accepting Christ, after decision, this incredible drama. What, what is the takeaway here? Number one, before Christ, I mean, Paul did, as a soul, a lot of crazy stuff, lived a religious life, persecuted the church, and all that, all the life experience, all the accomplishment. It's all passing. It's all passing. It has no eternal consequence, right? That's, a, I think, key point. All that you've done, before you met Christ, I don't care how much you accomplished, how much all the stuff that you think that you have done is garbage, is dumb. Um, so it has no eternal consequence. Everything you've done until up to that point means, means not much because it doesn't amount, it doesn't have any eternal consequence. Then what happens? At time of accepting Christ, right, you start actually living for eternity. That's where the life for eternity starts. Okay. Life before Christ was life for eternal damnation. But after you accept in Christ or encounter Christ, things are now adding up for eternity. That's why he, uh, test, Paul's testimony is powerful because he has two questions in life. Who are you, Lord? Then what shall I do, right? I mean, after all the life that he led, he says to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Wow. And then he says, after decision, AD, the key word is transformation. How you live after that is the key word is trans. Are you transforming into the image of God? That's the key. So then the, the whole thing is to live. And then I turned it into acronym. Live, L-I-V-E. You lose it. You invite the Holy Spirit to lead. Vision makes you enjoy God. L-I-V-E. How to live. And that's what we're going to cover tomorrow. But today, think about, what about you? Do you have a testimony? Can you really clearly define, you know what? This is when Jesus became real in my life. Because up to that point, all the life that you had and accomplishment has no eternal consequence. Day that you accepted Christ, day that you encountered Christ, day that you said, I want my life to matter for eternity. Even a cup of water that you've given to profit for sake of Jesus, it will start counting. So are you making your life count? And after decision, are you being transformed? Because Paul's life was transformed so much so that what? He became Paul. Do you have that? That kind of testimony uh, really demands transformation. How to live. 
So we're going to learn about it from tomorrow. So Holy Spirit, God, thank you so much for life that Apostle Paul lived after encountering you and giving the testimony to answer the theological arguments. Let us have the same, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. See you tomorrow, brothers and sisters. Have a wonderful day. Mwah.